Let's see what are the indications we have for composites. Composite can be given, of course, in small to moderately size, class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4, the aesthetic one, 5 and 6 restoration for foundations, for core buildup, uh, sealant, preventive resin restoration, for luting, we have resin cements which are very popular, temporary restoration also for periodontal. But when we talk about the amalgam, let's see what are the indications of amalgam we have. Class 1 to class 2 cavities moderately to large restorations as a core build of materials can be used for cuspal restorations like pin retained in combination with composite resin for cavities in posterior teeth as a dye uh, restoration that have heavy or crucial contact or the restoration that you cannot isolate properly. Of course, amalgam can be given in a teeth that act as an abutment for removal appliances. Now let's see what are the contraindications we have of composites. High caries index, poor oral hygiene, teeth with heavy or abnormal or crucial stress. If there is isolation difficulty, access difficulty, subgingival difficulty, right? In those cases, we cannot give composite. Also, some patients who are allergic or sensitive to raisin composite. But when we talk about the amalgam contraindications, we can see we cannot give amalgam and there is aesthetic requirement, of course, because metallic restoration is not aesthetic. When patient has a history of allergic reaction to silver alloy and when cost is not a concern, you don't give amalgam, then you better go for composite if it is possible. In composite, we have the filler and the filler content, of course. So as the filler content increases, the resin content decreases. Now the filler size will determine the surface smoothness. Smaller the size of filler, like in microfill, nanofill, they are smoother composite. Larger particle will give the rougher surface. The composite classification is mainly based on the size of filler. Having the filler increased content will improve the physical properties of the resin. It will improve the hardness, it will improve the abrasion strength. Filler, you can see what all it is improving. It is improving the compressor strength, corrosion resistance, improving the toughness, hardness, abrasion resistance, occlusal load, withstanding capacity is increased when the filler size is increased. Filler also affects the chemical property. Having high filler content also decreases the polymerization shrinkage. It decreases the solubility. It affects coefficient of thermal expansion, modulus of elasticity, make it more stiff. Filler size, aesthetic, more the size, the problem is the aesthetic becomes poor though. Filler number, more the filler content by volume, physical properties are going to improve. So this is the classification based on the filler size and loading. You can see macrofilled, small particle, hybrid microfilled. You can see smaller the sizes now. And see if the size is increasing of the filler, filler load is higher. Lesser filler size, filler load is lower. We have the recent type that are very important like you have nano hybrid, nano filled. The so nano hybrid and nano filled, what is a good thing you can see that size of the filler particle is very small that gives a smoothness but at the same time filler volume is also high. These newer recent type, they are having the both properties. They are giving smoothness because of smaller filler size. But since they have more filler volume by content, it's also improving the physical properties. These are the latest recent improved versions we have, which has the best properties with them. Let's see what the different types of fillers we can have in uh, composite. We have quartz. Quartz is clinically uh, inert, strong and hard, difficult to grind into very fine particles and difficult to polish at the same time and make it abrasive to the opposing teeth or restoration. Then we have filler as silica, a composition and refractive index same as quartz, less hard as compared to quartz. Then we can have filler as glass fillers with heavy metals which provide radio opacity, not as inert as quartz and silica and the glass filler have a disadvantage of leaching and weakening in acidic juices and oral fluids and they are more susceptible to wear and they have a shorter functional time. Now when we try to understand the difference between chemically cure and the light cure composite. Chemically cure they come in powder liquid version. So when you mix them they start polymerization. But the light cure will start polymerizing only when you show the light. We have the blue light with a wavelength of 450 to 470 nanometer. And chemically cure are less color stable as compared to light cure. Light cure definitely have better properties than chemical cure. That's the reason we use light cure. Placement materials is done in increment, it's called as incremental curing. That is going to reduce the chance of polymerization shrinkage with light cure composite. And since the light cure is not going to polymerize until you show the light, so you have enough working time for insertion and contouring. But with chemical cure, working time is definitely slower because that is not under your control. 
setting time is long with light cure setting is easy quick after activation by light and light cure are more aesthetic better as compared to chemically cured but overall chemically cured are still cheaper as compared to light cure but chemically cure will have more polymerization shrinkage less color stability than light cure that's the reason light cures are way preferred as compared to chemical cure let's see what all modern amalgam consists of it has the mercury it is have silver so the amalgam is actually made up of silver alloy and mercury silver alloy because it's not only silver it has other metals also in it but silver is in the highest composition then we have tin here uh, copper zinc and each of these metal has its own properties like tin it helps in amalgamation reaction decreases the expansion but silver is opposite to tin it increases the setting expansion and strength copper increases strength hardness high copper alloys are preferred zinc minimizes the oxidation of other metals then palladium is for whitening and mercury is added for making a amalgamation reaction making a workable mass zinc palladium silver copper and indium they all work together tin and mercury they are together but you can see higher the tin higher the mercury bad properties more chance of corrosion more chance of tarnish creep ditching of amalgam strength of the restoration is going to become less when you have higher tin and mercury content that's the reason we keep on carving out excess mercury keep on squeezing out excess mercury because higher the mercury all the bad properties are going to set in in your restoration so if you see the comparison between zinc indium and palladium you can see all three are increasing the strength but palladium increases the corrosion resistance both of them are increasing the setting expansion and increasing the setting time by the zinc indium increasing the setting time while zinc will decrease your corrosion resistance indium higher quantity will make amalgamation more difficult zinc as we know it can lead to delayed amalgam expansion it's a scavenger it prevents oxidation of other metals that we have this is the amalgamation reaction students we have silver tin plus mercury so silver tin is the gamma phase then we have gamma 1 phase is ag2 ag3 then this is gamma 2 phase sn8 hg this is the phase which is considered to be the weakest phase gamma 2 phase it's a most corrosive phase gamma is the strongest phase and then gamma 1 when you have high copper alloys you can see copper is more here ag3 sn plus hg then you have ag2 hg3 ag3 sn what does it mean that high copper alloys or copper enriched alloy have eliminated this gamma 2 phase that was there initially so less are the gamma 2 phase stronger is the restoration and less is the chances of corrosion gamma 2 phase in the second copper enriched alloy with the high copper more than 10 to 13% copper they have it was replaced with the copper tin so if you try to compare between the high copper and the low copper alloy you can see the high copper alloy have anywhere more than 6% to 30% copper low copper are usually less than 6% and less mercury is required for amalgamation high copper so that's the best thing fast setting require high speed and energy for amalgamation since copper has low solubility in mercury but low copper alloy require less speed and low energy for amalgamation however low copper will have more of the gamma 2 phase that is a corrosive phase while in case of high copper the dominant phase is the copper tin phase that is eliminating the gamma 2 phase so it has better strength less corrosion now if you see the more property difference between high copper and low copper tarnish and corrosion in high copper is due to rich phase copper rich phase copper 6 sn5 while in low copper alloy tarnish and corrosion is due to gamma 2 phase creep is very less in high copper so that's a good property while in low copper it is 1 to 8% compressive strength very high for high copper while low copper compressive strength is significantly lower dimension changes is also less with high copper you can see overall the properties of high copper are better than the low copper alloys the highest creep you see in the lathe cut you have three varieties lathe cut admixed and spherical so lathe cut amalgam is having the highest creep and conventional variety of amalgam has three types lathe cut admixed and spherical so admixed spherical is having a good compressive strength and admix is like a combo of lathe cut and spherical so it has the good properties we prefer high copper lathe cut high copper admixed alloys if you want to see the differences between properties of lathe cut and spherical lathe cut is requiring more mercury spherical require less mercury more condensation force for lathe cut spherical require less condensation force broader condenser point while lathe cut requires smaller condenser point carving burnishing is easier with spherical 
and the less overhang on strong proximal contact though with the lathe cut. Both of them have some advantages and the disadvantages. Let us see what is trituration. Trituration is when you are mixing the silver alloy with the mercury. So we have pre-weight capsules that you put in amalgamator going to rotate at a very high speed. Trituration you are mixing the silver alloy with the mercury. So, trituration is mainly rubbing the silver particles to remove the oxide coating so the mercury can easily penetrate inside. Both the over and under trituration are bad because over trituration will make it hard to remove from capsule, shiny, wet and soft. Under trituration will make it like a dry crumbly powder. Overall, if you compare over trituration is still better than under trituration. But the best is to have a normal mix, normal trituration time, shiny appearance and just separate in a single mass from the capsule. This is the normal or the well-triturated mass that we should say.